Hello and welcome back to another episode of Spocky's Tech Corner. And today, we have another unboxing to do. As it says right here, it says for a DC power supply. So, let's just go ahead and cut straight to the chase. And let's get me minimized. Let's get the overhead brought up. And let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got in this. Let's see how they did the packing. Let's see if this thing is as cheap as it says it is. Something's cheap. Mm, it kind of looks like. Well, let's just say a, somewhat of a good quality build. I like the case on it. Okay, let's take a look at it. Now, I'll have a description of this down in the. Um, the link in the description below. So what this is, I do believe this is a 30 volt max, 10 amp max output uh, uh, power supply. And in doing electrical component work on circuit boards and other good stuff, it's important to be able to power something and be able to choose the power of whatever it is you're trying to power. Say if it's a 12 volt object, if I don't have the adapter for it, I can just supply power to wherever for this. So I'm actually kind of curious. Let's go ahead and tear this thing open real quick and take a look inside of it. I want to see what kind of build quality we're dealing with. Because I have seen reports of these things catching on fire. And if that's the case, I'm going to go through, I'm going to do some modifications to this, and I'm going to put a circuit breaker in it, because looking at it, I don't see, I don't see anywhere where there's any kind of circuit protection on the outside. And usually for something like this, they'll have the circuit protection on the outside. I'm actually kind of curious. Okay, no, no, I was right. I was wrong. There is a fuse in the back. You can't see it. It's uh, Right here. It's integrated into the plug So at least it does have some socket protection in it So, I want to say I think I paid about 60 bucks everything for the unit and shipping. There's better power supplies out there. Yes, I know. I don't feel like paying three, four, five, six hundred dollars for them. This would be good enough for what I'm doing. Plus, we're also going to be testing it with a voltmeter. And the oscilloscope, I actually get to break that thing out to check the right form of the power that's being outputted. So, that's going to be fun to look at. 
So, let's take a look here. We have a thermal plate, we got a thermal switch here. We got linear switches. We've got a photo module here with capacitors that looks like the 820 microfarad, no, yeah, microfarad capacitors, 250 volts. Got a controller board here. Got all in all, I mean, it's I mean, it's cheap, but at least it's good quality cheap. <laughs> if there's such a thing. Um, they're using very, very cheap capacitors. That might be something I do later on, is actually replace all these capacitors with uh, Nishikon. <clears throat> so, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together, get things set up to test the outputs of this, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I've got my voltmeter out, and I've got my hand tech uh, oscilloscope hooked up. Uh, you don't see the module box because I don't have long enough cables, but if I do this, you can see that it's up. So let's go ahead and test out voltages first. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put the ground in, and I'm gonna put that in, and spin that around for you to see it. We are at zero volts right now, so it is showing negative 32 milliamps. So I'm gonna go up put the course setting to 1 volt so 1.03 and the way this display works it reads 1.0 so that's within an acceptable tolerance Let's go up to 3.3 .3 volts. Usually computers use this for 3.3 .3 volts. So we got 3.37. That's good. Let's go up to 5 volts. Five point oh volts. That is within spec. Okay, let's go ahead and crank it up to ten volts. Let's see. Right there's ten volts. Very good. Go twenty volts. Yes, yeah, twenty volts. And let's go ahead and go all the way up to thirty. And if you can listen, fans kicked on. Which I think it just does that when it gets when it gets a certain voltage range. 
Okay. Voltmeter says 30 volts. The machine says 30.1 volts. So, the higher the voltage goes up on this, the less accurate it gets. But I am... I am... Real glad to see that, like, if I wanted a 5 volt reference. It's going to be within pretty damn close tolerances. Now... Well, I gotta go ahead and check the AC ripple to see what kind of interference we got in this unit. So let's go ahead and hook our ground up to here. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up hand tech. And right now we're sitting at zero volts at one nanosecond. So let's go ahead and look. And we have no fluctuating wave current. So let's go ahead and take that time. Let's go right there. See, and that's at 2 volts. Let's go ahead and kick that up to 5 volts. Yeah, I'm not seeing any kind of waveform. So that tells me that this unit has good filtering capabilities. So it's not going to interfere with any uh, electrical application that requires any kind of a filter network. So that's good to hear. So, all in all, I'm kind of eager to give this train a test and see how it's going to do for some of the stuff I've got planned for it. So, if you want to see more, please stay tuned to Sparky's Tech Corner. If you liked the video, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you. Thank you.